everyone. Good morning, Tony. I'm Linda Bloom, County Commissioner, partner of Ed Russo for 10 years, and I'm happy to be here for this big celebration with his family this morning and his friends. We mark the beginning of an important mission for a 40-year landmark in our community, the City County Building. And with this new mission comes a new name. And we're dedicating this building in the honor of Edward James Russo. I don't know if a lot of people knew the James. His longtime service began, began as an elected official, a businessman, a community volunteer. He had lots of respect and admiration with him every day, as evidenced by the turnout at this event, and I thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to call on one of my partners, Nelson Peters, for a few remarks. Well, good morning, and, and thank you for sharing part of your morning with us today for, for this uh, dedication of this, this facility, this rededication, actually. You know, this script actually calls for me to speak to some of the history of how we got to this point, but I'd really be remiss if I didn't share a, a personal perspective of the building's namesake, Ed Russo. Ed was a friend, he was a mentor, and he was my predecessor. He took part in hiring me as the county's personnel director a number of years back now. I'm not gonna tell you how many years back. He was already larger than life at that time, having served a number of years on the city council and a number of years consecutively as the Allen County Council President. While he'd already blazed a trail with a number of successes in both uh, business and, and government, one of the things that I will always remember fondly about him was his great sense of humor. And Renee, I gotta apologize and to Bill because I think you guys have probably heard this story before, but I think it's worth repeating. As a young, impressionable 26-year-old, newly minted human resources director, I was giving a, um, an orientation right upstairs in what was the old commissioner's courtroom and I had about 50 employees in there, and we were talking about the do's and the don'ts and the expectations of county government and so on and so forth. And the double doors swing open, and there he is, Ed Russo. And I thought, I've only been here for two months. Am I getting fired already? <laughs> well, Ed beckons me to come to the back of the room, and I'm thinking, oh boy, this just can't be good at all. New baby, baby on the way, this is not gonna be a good thing. He, in a fatherly way, puts his arm around me, puts a smile on his face, reaches into his pocket, pulls out two tickets, and says, got tickets to the Northwestern IU game tomorrow. Wanna go? <laughs> I did. And we went, and we had a great time. Okay, now for some of the history. Ed Russo, who at the time was a city councilman, and other city and county leaders, according to this original city county building dedication booklet, had a vision for city and county government, which I quote, amounted to putting aside many of the concepts of the past and a willingness to face the future with united, confident, and positive thinking, end of quote. That's the exact sentiment that's gotten us to where we are today. After the dedication of September 17, 1971, the two governments cohabitated in the very building, in this very building, for close to 40 years. In June of 2009, however, Mayor Tom Henry announced a proposal to purchase the Renaissance building for use as a city hall. Faced with the prospects of having two separate buildings to serve city and county residents, the county commissioners responded with a request to examine placing city and county police and fire in one building and administrative offices in another. 
from about November 2009 to May of 2010, members of city and county councils as well as the mayor and the commissioners formally met for purposes of working toward an agreement to more effectively continue the 40-year relationship. In June of 2010, agreement was reached to locate civilian offices in what is now Citizen Square and city and county police um, right here in the Russo Center. So, today we begin the next chapter in city-county relations. One I'm sure Ed Russo would be proud of. One, as city and county leaders of the 60s noted, will allow us to bring a better tomorrow to Fort Wayne and Allen County. Thank you for allowing me the honor of participating in this rededication of the Russo Center as a memorial to a great citizen, a great community leader, and a great fun friend. Thanks a lot. God bless you. Good morning. I'm Commissioner Therese Brown. I too would like to say something off the cuff and not scripted. One being that I've had the opportunity to know obviously a lot of you out here for a number of years, that being maybe too numerous to mention, but quite a few. But I had the intimate benefit, pleasure, and honor to know the Rousseau family personally and professionally. So this for me is as dear and near to my heart. Though I was not here at the original dedication, I didn't come too far after that. So, that said, uh, completing a project of this size requires patience, dedication, and teamwork. Of these three, teamwork may be the most important, and we had a great team working on this project. It started two years ago with the hiring of our architects from the Design Collaborative and our construction managers from WA Sheets and Sons. Since that time, we've added to our team abatement engineers for, from ACM Engineering and Environmental Services, our contractors on the project, advanced mechanical systems, environmental management specialists, Fetters Construction, Innovation Control Systems, Jack Lorry Commercial Floors, LA Electric, Rosima Construction, and Strong Group. The commissioners thank all of you for your hard work on this project. We also had a great internal team. Chris Cloud with the commissioner's office and Dan Freck, superintendent of buildings and grounds, provided our internal leadership the last two years with a big hand from Brad Corman and Troy Hirschberger from the Allen County Sheriff's Department, Carl Niblick and Melanie Hickman from the City Fort Wayne Police Department, and Angie Eppling, Erpling, I'm saying that wrong, I know I am, from the Fort Wayne Fire Department, and as well as Tony Burris from the Safety and Environmental Division of the Allen County County. Department. Uh, off the cuff, I would have to say as well, uh, I think a little more than just a mere mention, but Chris Cloud, had it not been for his due diligence and intensity of keeping everybody focused, and that includes the three commissioners, uh, we would not be standing here today. So thank you, Chris. I would also be remiss not to thank the city and county employees who worked in the Rousseau Center throughout its construction. It was loud sometimes smelly, and never normal. On behalf of the commissioners, we thank you so much for your patience. And finally, the Board of Commissioners would like to thank the Allen County Council, the Fort Wayne County City Council, and Mayor Tom Henry for making the tough decisions, both politically and financially, in 2010 to move with the red forward with the renovations of Citizen Square and the Russo Center to better serve our citizens. And with that, I would like to introduce Mayor Tom Henry for a few comments. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning, Mayor Tom Henry. Oh, good morning, Tony. <laughs> My biggest fan. <laughs> I do have some prepared remarks, but before I do, I also have a something I'd like to ask the Rousseau family uh, because I'm a little confused. I, I first met Ed when I was elected to city council back in the early 80s and Ed and my father knew each other very well. So I thought once I was elected 
I have no problem communicating with the county. <laughs> However, <laughs> every time I saw Ed, he would just look at me and shake his head <laughs> and walk away. I never quite knew what that meant. And I still don't to this day. So, Ed, someday we'll meet. <laughs> Do they keep letting me know? But truly how fitting it is that this building is named after Ed. He was a dedicated public servant who worked, as you know, not only on the city council, the county council, but also a truly beloved county commissioner. Well, maybe not so beloved, but tr truly a, a, a great county commissioner. Yeah, he was. Ed's dedication to the citizens of Fort Wayne and Allen County was impressive and still is. And naming this building after him, I think, is an outstanding tribute to his years of service. It, re it represents a, a solution to a long standing issue of space use and service to the public. I'm delighted to see that our police department, the sheriff's department, 911, is currently going to be housed in this building. It, along with the co-location at Citizen Square and the consolidation of the 911 operations, clearly sends the message that we are all one community. Having two uniquely positioned buildings in the heart of our community that bring nearly all local government together makes, more, makes local government more accessible, more efficient, and more cost-effective. Something that civic leaders like Ed strove to achieve. Fort Wayne and Allen County are one community, and by working together, we are now charting, charting excuse me, a new course. To Maryland and to the Rousseau family, this is a fitting tribute, a job well done. Thank you. Everyone that's spoken has told a little bit about his resume, but his first experience in elected office came in 1964 when he was on the Fort Wayne City Council. He was a member of count, or City Council for eight years, two of those as president, chairman at one time or another of every county committee. In 72, he was first elected to the Allen County Council, and he served there 14 years. In 88, he became the first of four four-year terms as the county commissioner. At the end of 2004, 40 years after first being elected to public service, he chose not to seek re-election to the Board of Commissioners. In the private sector, Ed was a partner in REMAX, held a senior residential appraisal de designation. For those that don't know this, he was also the original manager of Glenbrook Mall. He served on so many boards, and I'm not gonna list all these, we all, he was on every board. He was recipient of many awards, and the big one, the highest one, the Sagamore of the Wabash in 2004. For me to, talk about Big Ed, and I really don't have any notes for this. This is just going to be a Linda from the heart. He loved first his God, and then his family and his friends. And then he loved politics. He was always there to share interesting stories about what he had achieved or not achieved and to give us all advice. He finally got to the point with me where he said, hell, you know how to do this, just do it. <laughs> he um, wanted at one particular time, and he told me this and said, you may be the only one that I tell this to, but if you're ever gonna name anything after me, I want a bridge, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what bridge it is. Well, quite a long time ago, that particular bridge was picked to be named for someone else. 
And when I told him about it and said the group had a plaque, they were ready to do it, he said, well, I'm not going. <laughs> he said, that guy's my friend. I went to school with him, but I'm never going to speak to him again. <laughs> and I said, now, Big Ed, you got to straighten up. I mean, he got there first. And he said, but he's still alive. <laughs> it was just a cute story, and I remember it vividly. <laughs> Another thing he'd say to me is be quiet and just listen and take my advice every day. <laughs> he took me at the very beginning of my commissioner career because he said, you were treasurer, you were auditor, and you didn't know it all. Being a commissioner, you do know it all. <laughs> And we're going to take you out to the airport to meet with um, an INDOT director who was leaving the job, going to a new job in two weeks. Came in with his uh, helicopter and his um, accountant. And Jack and Ed knew what this was all about. And we had a highway director with us and we had a lawyer with us. And they took us in this little room and they said, we're not going to be able to get this job done. You know this is a county road and we just can't give you the money. And the most, if we could and would, would be 50%. Of course, I had heard numbers larger than that and didn't know all the rules yet, so I said 50%. Now I got one of them kicking me under the table and Ed grabbing my wrist. And I think, uh-oh. And he said, just don't say anything, just listen. And I said, do you think that's fair? I said, we're talking about the airport. People can't find the airport. I said, we've got all these names. I said, we need an airport expressway. County, city, road, what the heck? We need a road to the airport. Is this why you didn't drive and flew in here in your helicopter? Well, that was a little out of line. <laughs> Well, by the time we finished, I said, what if we have an engineering estimate and we tell you what it is and you give us a percentage of this? Do you remember any of this, Bill? And I said, you're only going to be there two more weeks. We can't start all over with another INDOT director. So they gave us 70% of it which the guys never did figure out and did take credit for it, Jack and Ed. <laughs> well, when the project came in and was so underbid, we figured, and we didn't talk about it, but INDOT knew, they had more than paid for 100% of our project <laughs> because the engineering estimate was higher than the bid. That was a good day, but again, neither one of them mentioned this to me again. <laughs> now, we could go into childhood stories, but they're not as fun, except when I was getting my lecture again and getting verses read to me out of the Bible, which he kept in his upper left-hand drawer. And when I said inappropriate language for not only a woman, but for anyone, I was read Bible verses. Marilyn knows this, the girls, Mark, I don't know if you know that, Mark. No, no, certainly not. Anyway, I was read quite a few of those verses. So one noon I went in and sticky note my Bible where his pages were on his. And he got just wicked, as he could do. And I read to him. Now, no one has to read to him today because he didn't get that bridge he wanted but how more wonderful a dedication to the man we all loved than the city county building named the Edwin J. Russo Center. Thank you. I think the next speaker is going to be Marilyn Russo, and we're anxious to hear what words she has to say.
thank you for all for coming. And I especially want to thank the commissioners for all of their fun remarks and serious remarks and just uh, helped us in a way to know more about Ed. Um, it's hard to put into words what it means to our family for Ed to be honored in having this building named after him. And we do thank the commissioners, Linda and Nelson uh, and Therese and the mayor. Thank you. Uh, the Russo family has been part of uh, <coughs> Allen County since 1854 when they migrated from North Carolina. Uh, they left because they were opposed to slavery. After attending IU and serving in the Army for two years, Ed joined his father in the family business, which was Russo Brothers DeSoto Plymouth dealership. And just shortly after that, um, Chrysler Corporation quit making DeSoto, so Ed had to find a new kind of job. And he chose real estate. The Russo family has been business, uh, has been interested and involved in a number of different uh, businesses, including real estate and the medical field. And Ed's dad was always very interested in current events, and especially in Allen County. Uh, as Linda said, Ed ran for office for the first time in the early 60s, and he won. So that was an encouragement to him. He devoted the next 40 years to uh, public service. Uh, Ed was a man of strong opinion, but he could easily continue his friend friendships, even if he disagreed with them. If he disagreed with his friends or his opponents or family members. So even though he had strong opinions, he was still on a friendly basis no matter what. And we all appreciated that. <laughs> Uh, Ed once said in an interview that what he liked most about himself was his loyalty. He always wanted to stand on the side of what was best for the community, even when he was running for office and disagreed with his opponents. He would be extremely honored and humbled to be recognized by this wonderful tribute to his dedication to political service. Uh, Ed was a man of his word, a man of integrity, and a man who was devoted to his family and to the citizens of Allen County. And we all thank you so much for this wonderful dedication.